All right, let's get more ReZero content. This is from Mr. Jake Z123 Subaru versus Regulus episode three analysis. Hopefully we got some cut content too. Let's get it. With another amazing episode of ReZero. 10 out of 10. I want you to talk about a few things. You remember last episode when Subaru was getting BDSM hooked by Sirius and yeah. he was hanging from his neck? Yeah. Why is it that Subaru just tried to do the exact same thing to Regulus in this episode? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He just wants to fucking reach out and do that shit, right? I'm surprised it actually touched Regulus, but he's probably so like confident that it wouldn't have done anything. You know Subaru's obviously a sadist. Because he's like, well, I died by strangulation, so do you know what? I'm just going to try and hang Regulus by the neck with my BDS. Is he a sadist? Subaru sadist. Subaru is definitely not a masochist, is he? I mean, it's not like he enjoys the suffering, no far from it. Sam Whip. So I'm not too sure what Subaru was doing here. Also, like, you can tell Subaru has no aura because he just used his ultimate attack and it literally did nothing. And by the way, one more thing. Why the yeah, we pretty much just like uh, spammed everything, right? Whip, EMM, Invisible Providence, blew everything. Right, if we uh, forget about like Minya and Alshamak because that's something that we can't do because Biko has no mana to do that. We just blew our load. <laughs> just like, just blew everything and didn't do anything. I think it was a way for Tapei to tell us that like, yep, Subaru is about to use everything and we're going to show just like how different in power Regulus and Subaru is. More thing, why does Subaru look like this? He just did his ultimate attack. He did absolutely nothing. Uh -huh. Amelia is getting cucked and stolen from him. And why does he have this smile when he sees that his attack is doing absolutely- He's a bit proud. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just the art. It's just one frame of him kind of smiling. I don't know. I don't think there's deeper meaning to it, but... I don't know. He's just using his new powers and he's trying to show off, but at the same time, it didn't do anything. Absolutely nothing. But yeah, I know most people will hate Regulus, but you need to realize because he showed up, he actually did- Save the Amelia. Now, what's really interesting about the episode, I think most of you will agree the best thing was the sort of confrontation between Regulus and, of course, Sirius, who represent greed. Yeah, Sirius was having so many funny moments. Like, it felt like some weird, like, slice of life shit. Like, almost like Data Live example. Tobichi Origami sniffing Shiro's PE clothing. Yeah, that's what Sirius is pretty much doing. Sirius is making some weird ass comments about inhaling, you know, Better Goose's uh, exhale, how they made eye contact a couple times and now she's like, like we're like soulmates. She probably stole his clothes too. And Roth. But I understand why Subaru's attack didn't work. This is to show that ReZero is not like those other cliche animes where the main character gets a sort of time skip power boost. And then they enter the fight, they use their hidden ability, and they win the fight in one shot. This is Yeah, it doesn't... Ugh, it's, it's frustrating. But Tape does a really good job balancing the Subaru's powers. Whenever he gets something, like even Biko, right? Everyone probably thought that, oh shit, we can just spam Minya. Well, no. That only happened because of 400 years of, you know, mana storing. With Alshamak, right? Like, Alshamak can't happen anymore. Um, Subaru stuff, the whip, Invisible Providence... Like, like, every time Tape gives a new powers and seemingly we're about to get stronger, it's such a rude awakening when we realize that everything is such balanced that Subaru can't really just be this OP main character that just solves everything. And that's not what the show's about. It's about him trying to, st he's trying to like, gather other useful pieces and figure out what to do with them. This is to show you, in the ReZero world, some people are absolutely busted, and it doesn't matter how powerful you are, they're just going to absolutely dominate you. And Subaru tried to use his main character power, and he got absolutely wrecked. On the subject of getting wrecked, we saw this guard get absolutely crushed like mm -hmm. a pretzel by Gluttony. I do like um, the episode, how he included this scene, but I love This scene right over here, the bulge cleavage? How the Subaru and Amelia camp always talk about how they're going to find Gluttony, they're going to beat him up, they're going to get back Rem's memories. And then Otto sees Gluttony, and he's and shook, Otto. look at his face. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think that we're fucked, man. It's uh-oh for uh-oh. Will Otto's memories and name, will that be eaten away by a lie? And even if that happens, right? Let's say it happens. I am not despairing. 
Because I feel like this is going to be the arc where we beat Lai and bring Rim back. Maybe not this season. Maybe it's the next season. But even if Oto gets eaten away, I feel like there's a way to solve it. It's not the same level of despair when I remember Rem. Up, they're gonna get back Rem's memories, and then uh oh sees Gluttony, uh -oh. and he's just shook. Look at his face right now. You can tell he's he's panicking. It's like, well, you guys were talking mad shit. You said you're gonna get back Rem's memories. Here's the guy. Go do something. I understand uh oh can't really fight, but you know it's kind of funny when you see that contrast. Now let's get into. The other thing to make note for Lai is that uh, there's a letter. Remember? There's a letter right now that's been sent by Anastasia Camp. Uh, Yulis' little bro has a letter that's very, 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 very important and has to do with gluttony. And a repeating theme in ReZero is that letters never really work out. Rem's letter, it was blank because she got forgotten, right? Uh, Subaru's letter that he sent to Amelia, that shit just never made it, right? So, like, I'm sure... <laughs> This letter that has to do with gluttony will also just end up bad. You know, it's kind of funny when you see that contrast. Now, let's get onto the meat and potatoes. Of course, the actual main fight between Sirius and Greed. Essentially, it was just a talking match where they sort of talked about what love means. And I find it really interesting, and I know I'm going to get backlash for saying this, mm. but Regulus's stance that Amelia is cute and her face looks good yeah. And that's the reason why he wants to marry Amelia. Yeah, and that parallels with Sirius because her version of love is kind of different because she's her face is all wrapped up. Is kind of similar to Subaru's infatuation with Amelia. Oh, we're not going down the Sirius and Regulus parallels that a kid not mentioned, but okay. I mean, if Subaru was given Regulus's powers in the beginning of ReZero, you think Subaru would turn out the same way? I don't know. Maybe? Remember, the reason why Subaru liked Amelia, right? Because Silver-haired waifu, right? Silver-haired elf waifu, he has a preference for that. We saw that in the figurines. At the start, was that she looked cute. Yeah. It was love at first sight. And this is something Tape has made clear in... I don't believe in love at first sight. It's lust at first sight. You don't know that person. All you see is their outward appearance and your dick is like, yup, hot, I want to reproduce. That's it. That's lust at first sight. Uh, um, question and answers. Subaru loves Amelia from first sight just because she looks cute. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's other things about her, like a soothing bell-like voice, you know? And she's the fucking worst singer though she has a soothing bell-like voice but she can't sing for shit regulus is just another extension of subaru in a way when you think about it when you strip it back to maybe i, I see some comments too about comparing like Subaru and regulus of like if Subaru was never you know um correcting his behaviors from all the failures that he you know uh, has suffered right if he was given the same authority as regulus from the beginning of ReZero and he never learned anything maybe he'd be the same the bare bones nature of the relationship Regulus likes Amelia because she's cute, and initially, so did Subaru. But of course, now Subaru loves Amelia not just because she's cute, but because of other reasons. What's the other reasons? What? It, do we know? Because what I remember from season two is, I love you because I love you. And I don't know how to explain it to you, but I love you. Why? Because I love you. Why? Because I love you. This makes no sense. Well, shit. I can only do one thing right now to prove my love. Dodge this if you don't want this shit, Amelia. Here comes the kissy train. Why does he like her? I mean, I can, I, I know, I, I can bring some talking points. My, my, you, you already know my theories, right? There's like the, you know, she was the first one to show up to kind of help him, right? She really was, right? And there was the lap pillow moment. And then there's also the, uh, I, I think by the lap pillow, everything has been solidified. Beyond that, I think it has to do with like subconscious memories with Satella and that kind of feelings are now being brought forth to this affection for Amelia that can't be explained. I think that's where it's going, but like, why does Super like Amelia beyond that? I don't know. Because Amelia does have these redeeming qualities and I, I feel like some people are not going to make that connection. By the way, if you don't believe me, if you actually read the character description for Regulus, you will know that the fuck Regulus is, this? is pretty much always described as just an average person, someone that you would see and just forget. They're essentially an NPC when you think- Yeah, why did the artist 
just go out of their way to make Regulus look so fucking cool. Think about it. But who else is also an NPC? Subaru. Like, that's the whole first season of the show, is the idea that Subaru is not special, he can't protect- I mean, end of season one, he said he gave her 2,000 reasons and such. Are you using that example as in there is actually reasons? Or, because like, it's funny right now because I'm not sure you realize the actual meaning of 2,000. And how that supports my theory of the subconscious love for Satala being brought out and then being projected to Amelia. Because 2000 is the number of the shadows that was mentioned by Puck when fighting all better against like, you need at least half the shadows that Satala could do to fight me. So again, it's just like, do you understand the 2000? Or like, are you trying to say like, there's actual good reasons, but you can't name it? Amelia, he's a nobody, right? So I understand it's going to be hard to swallow, but... The whole point of ReZero is to show you that Subaru's not anything special. And that's the re Yeah. He's incredibly ordinary, but that's why it's endearing that he doesn't give up and continues to push forward. The reason why some people love ReZero is because Subaru's not this overpowered main character. If he was, it wouldn't be fun. Overpowered main characters are fun for like one arc. And then by the time everyone's already figured out how strong they are, it's, it's really hard to keep that hype formula going over and over again. It's better to have overpowered characters like Reinhardt, where you can use them, but it can't be abused to the point where you don't feel any stakes. You don't feel any, like, anything matters. There's so many, like, these random Isekai fantasy shows we watch, like Failure Frame, for example, right? The main character, you just gotta go paralyzed, poison, sleep. It's fun for the first bit. It gets boring real quick that can just one-shot everyone. You know, he's just a average person. And Regulus is an average person. He's literally described as like one of the most average people. Why is he so dripped out? So again, that's another connection between Regulus and Subaru, which again, I, I feel like people will miss. The only difference, of course, is Regulus does have that broken hacks ability and Subaru doesn't, okay? I mean, Subaru has a pretty broken hacks ability. Right? It's just a different type of broken. Like he, he doesn't have this seemingly vector transformation ability, right? But, <laughs> broken just restart and he can keep trying over and over and over again. Yes, there's these checkpoints. Yet to, yes, it's scary to die, right? It's traumatizing. You have to suffer. But there are, yeah, I think Return by Death is fucking insane. And maybe you could even see it as this idea that, you know, Regulus is what Subaru could have become mm. if power went to his head. Mmm, do you think that in like an if route, Subaru turns into Regulus? And if we follow the what if storylines, oh. we know that can actually be Which route? true. Which route was Subaru it? Subaru does actually become similar to Regulus when it, it comes to those if routes. Okay. Of course, as most of you know, the reason why Sirius totally changed in demeanor is because after Subaru used Invisible Providence, of course, keep in mind the sloth the goose. factor belonged to Beetlejuice, and when Sirius saw the unseen hand, keep in mind she can't see the hands, but she could sort of feel it. Yeah, because like we can see the hand, right? But like Regulus and them, they can't see it. No one can see it. And that's the trickiest thing. Because like at what point does Subaru be able to see the unseen hand in season one after episode 15? In episode 15, I think it was pretty much confirmed that no, Subaru could not see it. And then I was like, oh, he must have died. And then Miasma stacked up and that's why he can see it now. But apparently... That's not even the case either, and apparently, even like light novel readers at this current point, it's still being like hidden and ambiguous. I don't know why Tape is not going out to explain, you know, the details and why, you know, she can't see it, he can't see it, but whatever. Uh, so that means in trial two, right, when Regulus was fighting uh, Bet Better Goose, he couldn't see it. Obviously, the first one he couldn't see. That's why he got thrown around. And then after that, like, he's just fighting all these invisible ends. And right now, Sears can't see it. Regulus can't see it. It truly is an invisible hand. But shit, it doesn't fucking matter because it's so weak. So that's the reason why she starts, you know, calling Subaru. Oh, it's you, it's you, Beetlejuice. Now, what I don't like, and it wasn't actually stated in the anime, mm -hmm. is this idea that Subaru says that he's not Beetlejuice, he has nothing to do with Beetlejuice, he's not going to be Beetlejuice. But Sirius claps back saying, you may not be Beetlejuice now, but in the future you will be. It's very important to understand. You will be? 
My uh, headcanon uh, tinfoil theory, because I want Betrix to come back, I basically walk backwards. My end goal is Betrix will somehow return. But how? He's dead. He's a spirit. His soul? Was it destroyed? I don't know. But we use Rental Goa at the end, and Betrix is burned. And does a Rental Goa do spiritual, like, soul damage? I don't fucking know. But we got his Witch Factor, meaning that he died, right? But... Like, my schizo theory is, somehow, someway, in the Sloth Witch Factor, or maybe because he signed Betrigus' gospel with his blood, I don't fucking know. I'm just trying to figure out a way where Betrigus can, like, return and, like, take over Subaru's body. I understand the idea that Witch Factors, like the Sloth Witch Factor that Subaru has, will eventually take over and corrupt him. Similar to how Sirius is crazy and Beetlejuice. But like, if you're gonna say that like, you know, the reason why Subaru can use Unseen Hand is because Betrigus is in Subaru, then what about Sekhmet and Betrigus? Why does Sekhmet and Betrigus both have the same invisible hand, right? Because right now, the running meme theory is the authority actually doesn't change for Sloth specifically because Sloth is lazy and the authority itself is so fucking lazy that it's always gonna be the Unseen Hand. This was crazy when he absorbed the Witch Factor. Eventually, the Witch Factor will take control. Now, of course, the other main thing in the episode was, of course, Garfield, Garfield. and Amy. And again, this is just character development for Garfield. This idea that he thought his mother was dead, but she's actually alive. Memory and we loss. Now have the backstory of how she survived. Now, I know some people don't like this, but you guys need to realize Garfield is a child, right? 14, so of 15. He does get a bit emotional. And what I do like is the fact that Mimi is here. This is something. I love it, but I also hate it. Because Mimi is being set up to be someone that's gonna die or be really hurt, and for Garfield to have like an emotional reaction explosion moment. Mimi is having way too many slice of life moments. Everyone loves Mimi. She is the perfect candidate to like something fucked up to happen so that Garfield pops off. That ReZero does that not many other animes do. They introduce these side characters, and the side characters never do anything. They're useless. However, in ReZero, they build them up. Blends it so that different side characters are important. They get their own screen time. Just like how, for example, in Season 1 with the White Well fight, you had the Krush camp, you had Ricardo, you had Wilhelm. And Wilhelm is one of the fan favorite characters of ReZero. Actually, Ricardo is not part of the Krush camp. It's Natasha. <laughs> Natasha's Iron Fang, but anyways. Are important. They get their own screen time. Just like how, for example, in Season 1 with the White Well fight, mm. you had the Krush camp, you had Ricardo, you had Wilhelm. And Wilhelm is one of the fan favorite characters of ReZero, and he's a side character. He just disappeared for several years, he came back, and now everyone loves him. Of course, in this uh, sort of episode, there's a focus on Mimi and Garth's relationship. And again, I love Garfield. He's, he's one of my favorite male characters in the series. I was really not a Garfield fan in season two because of how annoyed I was at how stupid he was and just getting in our way when it just feel like he didn't need to. But it was necessary. The buildup happened. He's redeemed himself. And now he's just so powerful. And he's basically a battle shown in male character now, right? Having these like inner like dialogues with Elsa. So I like Garfield a lot. I think he's like a huge asset. Even Roswell believes in him saying like, you know, if Otto, you know, can't, you know, negotiate properly, then at least you're, like, the insurance where you'll just, like, blow up everything and we'll make it back safe. Like, that's how much faith he has in his Garfield's power. Garfield is crazy. Even Reinhardt acknowledges how strong he is despite being so young. And, unfortunately, many people don't like him, which I don't get, but he's so... I get it. It's because of season two shit. It's, it's literally because of the sanctuary bullshit and him, Garfield, seemingly being an antagonist for... Seemingly no reason, but you know, if you've actually watched the show, you there you do know there is pretty decent reason. Such an amazing character, and we're getting that character development, which we we do need. Of course, finally, we had the ending scene where Subaru wakes up after his leg injury, and we see Aldebaran here. Now, I'm gonna mention this because I'm getting so tired of the anime messing this up, hmm. but this scene is actually supposed to bring suspicion upon Aldebaran. Mmm. Quite often, the cut content tells us that Al is very shady. There's a darkness, you know, amidst him. Even his back of the helmet, right? There's a witch's scent that lingers. It's seemingly that Al is someone that's very suspicious. 
but the anime never alludes to it. The anime also skips the cut content about how Al is an isekai character from the Great from Beyond the Great Waterfall. Also, Al only has one arm, but that's supposed to be a detail that you're supposed to figure out yourself. Because what Al actually says in the light novel is that you shouldn't say your name around gluttony. Now, I understand why this was removed. How would he know that, right? You shouldn't say your name around gluttony. Oh! Because I don't remember cruising her Okay, let's go back to season two. I was- people were asking, why did Rem get name and memory eaten, but Cruz didn't? Rem literally did her intro. I am the head maid of the Roswell- wait. I am Natsuki Subaru's, like, attendant, right? Rem. That's it. If you give away your name like that, your name sh also gets erased along with the memories. Cruz never said anything like that. Cruz never revealed her name. And that's why only memories. Huh, okay. Moved because in the anime, the person that tells Subaru and the rest to not say their name around gluttony was Puck all the way back in season two before he left to get the milk. So <laughs> Puck tells everyone to not say their name about around gluttony. I hope Otto didn't fucking say anything. Gluttony because he can eat your name or your memories. However, in the light novel, this is originally revealed by Aldebaran, and it's supposed to give some suspicion towards yeah. him. Yeah, like how would Al even know such detail? What, how much interactions has he had with the witch's cult? Has he fought Gluttony before? Why would you know this? How does he know this? You know, why is he telling us? I mean, of course, he's telling us because he's a good character, but how does he know it? And it's supposed to get the readers to sort of wonder who is Al? Like, why mm. does he cover his face? Exactly right. There is like Al is supposed to be such a significant major character in like the future arcs. I think it's supposed to be like what arc seven and beyond. I don't think it's arc six, right? But the anime is really dropping the ball in hyping up Al to get there. But they just cut it out, and uh, I think they're doing a disservice to Al's character because he does have a lot more layers to him. Agreed. Reading the cut content regarding Al is just mind-blowing, and I don't know why they wouldn't set up Al like this. It's such amazing foreshadowing. It's the shit that they glaze One Piece for, right? They're gonna be like, oh my god, hundreds of episodes ago it was already foreshadowed, and oh my god, it's finally, finally happening now. Like, the same thing could happen for Al, but the anime is just not doing that. I have no fucking clue, but very interesting that, you know, it's about... Does Gluttony know your name? And if seemingly, if you've told your name, then you got your name and memory erased, right? Cruz never stated the name at that moment in Season 2, Episode 1, despite their prior knowledge of, you know, who the characters are. But that's pretty interesting. I hope Otto didn't say anything. We know Otto is, you know, by a lie right now. But even if he got erased, again, I don't feel that bad because it just feels like the resolution for Rem is going to come close and we're probably going to defeat lie button kaitos this season but hey that's it for me please go give mr jake z a like on the video check out his channel if you haven't here's the link and i'll see you next time